It's football night in the UP. The scores are in, the highlights are captured, and now it's time for the fifth down. Welcome to the fifth down week three of the high school football season provided us with some great matchups and there was no lack of action tonight all across the UP. We're going to start with our game of the week. The hottest team in the UP right now is arguably the Gladstone Braves. They traveled to Menominee for a great Northern Conference clash. Let's head to Walton Blesch Stadium for the game between the Braves and the Maroons. A nice crowd at hand for the game. No score in the first quarter. That is until Cole Pucci going to outrace everyone to the pylon to give the Braves the 8 0 lead after converting the two point attempt. Menominee saying, My turn. Trevor Therokoff going to avoid some pressure. He'll get to the outside, and you got to check out the athleticism. He's going to leap over the defender and into the end zone. That's a top three on three nominee. 8 6 Gladstone after the Maroons fail on the two point attempt. With the first quarter winding down, Braves in the red zone as Pucci once again, 16 6 Braves. Gladstone Stone going to make it 3-0 on the season with a 28-6 win over Menominee. Uh, just a great win. The kids played hard. Proud of them. We overcame some turnovers, which we usually don't do. And uh, that was the turning point of the game for us. We're going to enjoy this until uh, Monday, and then we'll get after St. Ignace. Moving on, we're going to make a stop in Nagani. A big night for Miners Faithful. They had an open house for their new athletic facility, and they honored their 2022 state title team. The present Miners were not messing around tonight. Already up 7-0 in the first. Easton Palama Palamaki right up the gut. He's untouched into the end zone. 14-0 Miners. Second quarter, Nagani threatening again. Nico Lucarian will not be denied. He powers his way for a couple yards and a touchdown. From there on out, the Palamaki show continued. Now you got to give the credit to the Miners offensive line. Pal Mackey is barely getting challenged on some of these runs. 21-0 Miners, and then one more time, 34-0 Nagani. They would go into the half up 40 to zip. This one was all Miners, 44-6 over Hancock. Let's head to Gwynn. The Model Towners hosting the Launce Purple Hornets. No score in the first quarter. Gwynn moving the ball during their first possession. Connor Dupro going to roll left, and he'll find Logan so Soyring, who's going to break off a big run after the catch. Unfortunately, the drive would stall with no points. After a model towner punt, Lon's going to put together a nice drive, second and nine from their own 44-yard line. Kellen Koskinen going to take the handoff. He'll head right. He doesn't see an opening, so he does a nice job cutting back and finding a lane. He takes the ball across the 50, and he's tackled just outside the 20-yard line. A couple of plays later, it's Fisher Lati Vinland running hard. He's going to run through a couple model towners defenders for the score. Launce would not convert the two-point attempt, so the score would be six zip, and it would stay that way throughout the first half. Both teams had a touchdown called back by a penalty, and we did not get a final score reported for this game. Let's head to Iron Mountain. Mountaineers taking on Houghton. Iron Mountain already up 21-0 in the second quarter, but the Gremlins going to piece together a nice drive through the air. Camden Markham throws a dime to Miko Salmi for a big gain. And then it's going to be Markham with another beautiful throw here, this time to Jace DeForge for a touchdown. 21-6 Mountaineers, but then it's Brandon Farah for Iron Mountain. Nothing fancy, just some old school smash, smash mouth football by the Mountaineers. They go on to win this one over Houghton, 28-6. Let's make the short trip over to Kingsford. The Flivers hosting Wausau West. Kingsford will score their first touchdown with an outstanding defensive play. Eliza and Rouse will punch the ball loose. Noah Johnson scoops and scores for the Flivers touchdown. Later, Wausau looking to get something going. We just saw Johnson score a touchdown. Now he's getting a sack there. He was all over the field in this one. Here is Kingsford's second score of the, the game. A strong physical run by Rouse. This kid is just special, but when all is said and done, the Flivers fall 34-14. And finally, we had to Calumet. The rain coming down for the Copper Kings hosting Westwood. Second quarter, Calumet up 6-0. The Patriots going to get on the board. Jace Arsenault slashes through the middle for the score. It's 8-6 Patriots after a successful two-point conversion. Later, Calumet driving and with second and five on the 50-yard line, a quick handoff to Hans Keelanen lining up at fullback. He's going to break through the Patriots defense and no one's catching him. A nice 50-piece there for Hans. 12-8 Copper Kings regain the lead. Still in the second quarter, Patriots answer. Andrew Nimi, nice fake hand off to Jersey Karki. It was so good, it actually faked out our cameraman. Nimi going to pass it to Edward Anderson, and he's into the end zone to give the Patriots the lead right back, 14-12. And Calumet going to take that lead right back. Axel Locus going to call his own number. Calumet tops Westwood in a close one, 18-16.